Uh, you still have a bit of energy left? Yes. Ah, super. Um, so I wanted to lower the light setting to play a bit of piano, but it's not going to be possible. So I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's uh, really good to be in Bulgaria. I don't know any word in Bulgarian except Zazimyata, which I think is beautiful. So now I need to learn hello, thank you, uh, everything. But I'm working on it. You can check me tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get the remote control. Do you know if... Here it is. No, that's the... Do you have the the remote? Great, thank you. All right. Um, learning every day. All right. So I want to talk about different concepts today. Uh, first one is that the world is going vertical. OK? So 70% of the population is going to live in urban environments by 2050. OK, that's the first parameter I want to leave you with. It means that we're going to have to deal with high density um, areas, uh, whether it's for energy production, waste management, all these sectors of resource management are going to be under pressure. Um, our resources in general are going to be under pressure, right? We're going to need to grow more food to train. How are we going to um, take on this challenge? Uh, we can see around the world already the drought in California. Uh, water is under increasing pressure. Can we power the planet with 100% renewable energies, right? All those are questions that we need to seriously address. And I think it's interesting to look at it from a resource management perspective in general. I'm going to try to give a few concepts that will help you understand some of the trends we can observe today. So our cities are changing. Um, we need to look at the big picture in my, in my mind. So today I want to talk about how does some of the economic and social societal trends that we see today integrate with zero waste in the circular economy concept? Or I should say, how does zero waste in circular economy integrate with some of the major trends that we can see at the macroeconomic level? This is where I live. Uh, it's the paradise of incineration. Uh, I live in Malmo. But I like to call this the Olsen region. It has around 4 million people, and it has the most ambitious agenda with sustainability. So these cities want to be climate neutral by 2025. So you understood this morning that there's a lot of work to do on the waste management side, but it's a very interesting region when it comes to the, the discussions on energy, the discussions on um, food, uh, urban gardens, there are a lot of interesting things happening. And this bridge is pretty famous if you have a chance to come visit. This is my boss. Uh, it has very high expectations at the moment. And just to give you a little bit of perspective about what I do, I work as a social and environmental entrepreneur. So my organization, Green White Space, it builds and operates businesses social and environmental businesses. So um, this is just to mention that we have a pretty broad perspective. We work a lot with zero waste, but we also tap into other uh, sectors of sustainability. And on the hobby side, I'm a web radio producer. So there's a show called The Green Exchange, which focuses on the region over there, where we talk about all topics related to sustainability. The organic stream is about bio waste. And uh, it's an international channel where uh, you can find stories from around the world. And uh, working on a documentary about the integration between the water and carbon cycles, um, and in particular, the drought, drought situation in California. Through all these projects, I can see very clearly that resource efficiency is very strongly connected to the carbon footprint. OK? This is pretty obvious. Now. I want to show a couple of trends. This is true for 
hospitals, institutions, residential areas, industry, agriculture, our communities, there's a very strong link between resource efficiency and carbon footprint. Now, what we can see happening right now through all the crisis situations and through all the political debates is that slowly we are moving from centralized system for resource management towards distributed systems. Okay, so I'm gonna talk one minute about this. For energy, for decades we've, build, we've been building energy systems that produce energy on a large scale in a centralized area, and then we transport this energy and we deliver it to the different uh, consumers, okay? This has a huge carbon footprint, of course. The food system, it's very centralized. We, we grow food in extensive agriculture, away from the city, then we transport the food, the food where it's consumed. Same for water. We transport water from far and waste, of course. As you know, we transport waste, we deal with it in mega facilities and so on. So this is a centralized model. It's the old model of resource management. Now we're mo moving to our distributed systems. But one last slide about the centralized model, and I'm, I apologize for the the, um, the size of the fonts here, is that you are highly depending, dependent on infrastructure, okay? And these are very heavy structures where just a few people are making decisions about the whole system. So it's non-democratic. And also you're highly dependent on the externalities. Uh, we can see the drought situation in California where the water comes from far. What happens when just, you know, when, when we don't have access to this water anymore? And we have no control on the prices. It's this small group of people that control the situation. Now, with a distributed resource management system, you take one uh, hospital, for instance, and you want to manage to produce the energy on site, to manage your waste on site, to manage your water on, on site through rain capture and, and different waste uh, treatment systems. You want to grow your food on, on site and you manage the carbon budget on your site. And so you have a carbon neutral budget down the road, right? And then you can replicate the systems, okay, from one system to another. So this is a more, much more sustainable way of looking at uh, our resource management. And this is happening in the energy sector. It's very clear that people start to generate energy on their rooftops with solar panels, or communities get together to manage their own energy. Uh, um, generation. Also, uh, community recycling initiatives, community composting, right? We see these distributed systems everywhere in many countries. And the good news is that zero waste perfectly integrates with this philosophy. So that's the example very quick of Loyola University in Los Angeles. And they have uh, their solar panel um, on the rooftops for energy production. They have their own MRF on the site, it's very interesting. And then they sell to different recycling chains from on site. And um, what, you know, what happens when you start growing food closer to the consumption source? Of course, the carbon footprint is highly reduced. So are zero waste system distributed, right? Well, if we're talking about local material management, we're talking about the democratic um, governance system, highly reduced uh, CO2 uh, footprint, and the zero waste systems are highly repli replicable and scalable. So good news, we are matching the trend. Talking about consumption for a minute, how is this little girl going to consume, buy, what are her purchasing behaviors for the coming 20 years? I want to talk about the sharing econ economy, or the collaborative economy, depending on the, the countries and, and the experts, there are different terms. But you guys know Airbnb? Yes. Is it in Bulgaria yet? Or yes? Well, we share our homes. We share our cars to and and there, this company, Blah Blah Car, is seriously looking at Eastern Europe in particular because we can really create efficiencies by commuting together. Okay. W what is this? Does any one of you know what this is? A 3D printer. This is great because when your community owns a 3D printer and you lost the knob on your, you know, cooker or fridge or, you know, you can just print the, the blueprint, print a new part, 
change it instead of throwing away, right? So there are all these, this is also the sharing economy, and this is also a good illustration of a distributed system. Now, the key market force is why is this sharing economy happening? Well, there are soci societal drivers. We want to connect. There's a shift in value systems. We, we have more of the sustainable mindset, right? Then there are economic drivers. Of course, it's more cost efficient. We like it. And the technology enablers with the smartphones, it's very easy to connect, to find someone to take you to the next city or you know, to, to share resources. Now, System efficiencies lead to much lower use of resources, right? You don't need four cars anymore, you need only one, and then you need to get organized with your friends, okay? So down the road, we're talking about waste production. Okay, if you look at it from the macroeconomic perspective, this is very good news, because if the sharing economy keeps spreading like this, it means that we're going to reduce significantly our uh, impact on the planet, and we're going to create a lot of efficiencies leading among others, to reduce waste production. And as you know, in the waste uh, management hierarchy, prevention and minimization is at the top. Okay, it's the number one priority. So, is the sharing economy accelerating the transition towards a zero waste society? Yes, good news. All right, we're on track. Zero waste creates jobs. Is this full employment in Bulgaria or is there a need for job creation? All right, I think I know the answer. L like in most countries, of course, politicians and communities are interested in creating jobs. And just as a side note, you can see that the job creation potential of the zero waste economy is very much on the reuse and recycling part of the hierarchy, because reuse also includes repair. And uh, this is labor intensive. But there are three reports that I read every day. Well, not every day, but you should really look at this. Uh, I'm not going to get into details. And uh, we will share the slides and or take a picture. Three, two, one. It's gone. All right. And this report uh, that you know that is very well documented on the Zero Waste Europe website shows this number. Intense reuse plus 70% recycling, which is an ambitious scenario in the report, but still leads to one out of six unemployed youth back into work. This is interesting. What happens when you get a generation of product designers into the into the redesign, into redesigning products and systems? Very interesting. This is taken at Barcelona Airport. This is a famous Spanish brand called Desigual. Maybe maybe you know it. And this is a shop. Like I'm like, if you can, like if if this costs 70 euros, you can make this out of recycled material. So, but the, the real question is, are you a good entrepreneur or not, right? If I'm a designer uh, for you know, re retrofitting shops, and, and if that's in Barcelona Airport, we can make this out of recycled wood. You know how much they paid for this interior design? Well, I want to know, because you can build a business here. That's what we're doing. What's interesting with the social and environmental ent entrepreneurship in the zero waste economy is that instead of looking at the global business to cover a global um, uh, consumer base, you look at, again at a distributed system. How can you create a local business where we're talking about local jobs and local entrepreneurships and then provide all the tools to your friends in California and South America and in Asia to replicate the same business, adapting the brand to the local specifics and, and really creating a, a knowledge base that helps you really drive entrepreneurship in the zero waste economy. This is interesting. So think about this little girl. Okay, because her value system shifts. It's becoming cool to wear second-hand clothes. It's becoming cool to share a car with someone else, right? So it's not about the charity purchase anymore. Okay, it's about how do we build brand. The shop in Stockholm is in the most expensive shopping street in the city. Okay, and this sell. Uh, this is all zero waste. It's all recovered resources. Okay, but they sell the premium price, and they hire the best store manager in the country to build this on, okay? And they pay the rent, so they make it, right? And most of their customers, they don't even know they're buying zero waste or circular economy products, right? So you should visit there. So can we build competitive businesses in the zero waste economy? I think so. It's about, are you a good entrepreneur, right? Thank you very much. I, yeah, was not much time, but I'll take questions.